seems to love our hand and I am here to talk about the electric bill that I run on my interceptor. Um, I started using this build a while ago and uh, but I I didn't really use it too much because I kind of fell back on an aspid build that felt like it was a little more useful, did a little more damage in endgame. So I was using that for a long time and then when the 1.0.4 changes came out, I actually came back to this lightning build because it's just a whole lot more fun than it was before and it was fun before. But um, it, it feels much better to play in in-game too, and we'll get into what I like about the build in a second. What do you need done? So, as far as weapons go, I, this is a melee build, so weapons don't really matter. Just use them as stat sticks or to boost your item level if you want. For the assault system, I use Renary's Charge. It's only lightning skill here, I think, and I use it as a gap closer. If you're, you've ever played Mass Effect games with like the vanguards with their biotic charge and whatnot, that's basically what I use this for. Not so much to detonate. Sometimes I use it to detonate because it is a detonator, but I mostly use it to get around and zip all over the field. Support systems, you could probably go either way with these. I, mean, I know most people prefer target beacon, and that's what I run too. But you can probably get away with the rally cry if you want a little more survivability. Uh, Karis Talon is the skill I go for here. And um, it's actually the main skill, or one of the main skills of this build. It's a uh, does a nice exploding attack so like if you you put it on somebody and it kind of sets like a time bomb sort of and then when it if the target dies with that on it or if it kills the target then it'll explode and chain to a bunch of other people so it's great for AoE and um, this health on um, defeating an enemy, we'll get back to that later. Components, mostly stuff that boosts your damage, vengeance matrix, this change is nice. Uh, this gives us a little more mitigation if we're dying. Conductive lattice, kind of a no brainer for an electric build. This. I guess this would be a nerf because it doesn't proc as often as it used to, but I don't think that hurts this build at all, really. Not an increase to damage that we use here on this build, but, well, the flat damage, but this proc gives us 30% damage increase every time we chain together two skills, so, and I use Renary's charge into Kiara's talent a lot, so this procs a lot, which is great because then your melee attacks do a lot more damage. Speaking of melee attacks doing more damage, here's this one Wave Resolve dashing increases melee damage as well. It's always great because interceptors are always dashing. This or, uh, boost to your combo pulse, pretty nice too, and the thing that's even nicer is the 40% uh, armor return when you kill with a melee attack. And this one I just put there because I don't really have anything better. If I had the new Bloodless Universal um, component, I would definitely put that here, but I don't have one yet, so I gotta stick with what I got. So in regards to this, this, and the Cares Talon. These are pretty big um, components and skills for this build because um, since this is a melee build, you have to be surrounded by enemies just about or in enemies' faces, which means you're going to be more prone to get hit by them if they target you. Unless you've got like a Colossus taunting off you. 
How are, so, if you're getting pelted by bullets, then your health is probably gonna get really low because we're really squishy, but the Vengeance Matrix helps you stay alive a little longer because of that damage reduction. And if you manage to land a kill and trigger Way of the Bold with your melee, or you trigger Cares Talons kill, you get health back. So basically, if you're dying, just stay in the fight a little longer, try to hold it a little longer. If you land a kill, you'll heal yourself, and, and you'll be fine and can continue to go on about your business. Which makes this pretty powerful to me, because you don't have to run off and hide behind something, line of sight the bullets or whatever. You can just stay in the fight more, get more damage out there, get more kills, have more fun, blah blah blah. So... As far as consumables go, these are the ones that I pick. You can probably stack up some of these if you want to. I just usually grab one of each because I feel like they're the, the best ones for this build particularly. But um, now I'm going to show you some actual footage of a Tyrant Minds run in Grandmaster 2 so you can see how this build plays in the end game. And I'll probably throw in some footnotes or subtitles or whatever for explanations showing my thought process of why I do what I do with this build and blah blah blah. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> and acidic weapons. That's a combination I could do without. Last thing we need are these bastards getting creative. Corvus said they've hit multiple characters. Speaking of Corvus, patching in Seb. Hey, you got some. You ready to do your job and suggest? Just a normal day in Bastion. <laughs> well, what's not long what is the scar activity in this region? Do you think this is where they're making the acid? Any idea how? I want you to find that out. I'm gonna stop to it. Something to it. He's gone volatile. For those of us who don't speak shape, that's bad, right? Obviously. Freelancer, we'll need to silence the
overcrowded. Look, eggs everywhere. Your theory's got legs. I'll pat myself on the back after I dealt with the scars.
unprofessional to cut the link, right? Highly. Damn it. Next time, I expect big ass bugs to be in the mission briefing. Even Clovis doesn't know everything. Legs. Oh, no more scorpion talk, please. 